Hey there. In this video, we're going to continue to look at transformations of sine and cosine functions, but this time we're going to do it in reverse. We're going to start with a graph of a sinusoidal function and then try to write a sine and a cosine equation to represent that graph. All right, so we're going to write equations for a couple of different trig functions here. And the structure of the equations that we're going to write is our standard form here, where we need to work out an A value, a B value, C value, D value, as in the sort of four different transformations that may have happened to this graph. Horizontal and or vertical compression, horizontal and or vertical translation. So the first one here, if we look at it, we're going to work out the four things. First thing we're going to notice is we're going to look at the period. The period we can see from just looking at the length of one cycle. So say if I pick a point on the axis here, I can just look for the same point in the cycle, which is that point right there. So that period is here, like our period is that long right there. And maybe we can't see exactly what this fraction is here of pi, but you can think of it as eight squares out of pi is 12 squares. So our our period here, if I can write it up here, period is 8 twelfths of pi, or 8 pi over 12. Or if you reduce that, it's 2 pi over 3. And if your period is 2 pi over 3, your b value, this value we need in here, is 3. If you're not sure of that, you can always get the b value by doing 2 pi divided by the period, and the period is 2 pi over 3. So 2 pi divided by 2 pi over 3 is the same as 2 pi times 3 over 2 pi. If you cancel those 2 pi's, you get 3. Either way there, you get that the b value in your equation has to be 3. So we'll write that down over here. B is 3. So we've got uh, one thing there. Now we'll work out maybe the two vertical things here because they're probably a little easier to, to work out. For the two vertical things, we need to look at the max and the min and, and work out the, the middle here. So our, our uh, maximum here is 4. Our minimum here is negative 8. If you can kind of just see the difference there and see where the middle is, the middle is going to be there at negative 2. If you're not sure where the middle is, if the numbers are kind of strange or harder to work with numbers, to find this midpoint, to find the midpoint of, of any two numbers, you can just take the average of the two, max plus min, divide by 2. So in other words here, we can take 4 plus negative 8, divide by 2. Or in other words, we have negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2. That's our midpoint there. That's our d value, our vertical displacement. This is our vertical displacement. If we want the amplitude now, if we can see that negative 2 is the middle, if we can just count, it's going to be 6 up and 6 down for there. So our a value is going to be 6. Our amplitude is 6. If we weren't really able to see that, again, if the numbers were harder to work with, we could just do the difference between these two divided by 2. Or in other words, you could go max minus min divided by 2. Max minus min divided by 2. In other words, 4 minus negative 8 divided by 2 is 12 divided by 2, which is 6. So I'm getting a little crowded here, but this is our amplitude here amplitude and so we've got our we've got our d value we've got our a value we've got our b value we just can just work out our c value so let's get rid of some of this other stuff that's going on here maybe we can start to write the equation down below here well, in the space that we have so if we're going to write our equation we have those three values but what we need to work out is what we need to work out is the c value, but the c value is dependent on whether we call it a sine or a cosine equation. So if I was to call this a cosine equation, let's do that first. If I was going to call this a cosine equation, so let's write everything else here. We have our amplitude of 6. We're going to put cos 3, our b value, x, 
we're going to leave the, the phase shift alone for a second here and then put minus 2 on the end. So we have that part of the equation. That part of the equation will be the same no matter whether we call it sine or cosine or negative sine or negative cosine. If we're going to call it cosine, we need to pick a maximum point like this one. It probably makes the most sense because it's the closest to the axis here. So this is as though this curve is shifted one space to the left here. And it's one space out of 12 that pi is. Pi is 12 squares. This is one square. So it's shifted 1 12th of pi. Pi over 12 to the right, sorry, to the left. To the left, we need to put plus because it's the opposite. It, it, when you shift to the left, that's a positive value in there. All right, so that is one cosine equation we could write. We could have, of course, instead for our phase shift, we could have used this point, and we could have thought of it as being shifted 7 squares, 7 twelfths of pi. We could have put minus 7 pi over 12, or we could have shifted over to here. There's an there's a lot of things visible on the uh, on the graph here, or there's an infinite number of things that we could have used. Well, we'll stick to that. We'll stick to that closest one, which is plus pi over 12, because I'm not going to have a lot of space to write every single one here. If we want to write a uh, if we want to write a um, another cosine equation, the other thing we could have done is we could have used a negative point here, like this, as in you could use a minimum point. You could call it negative cosine. So you could say negative 6 cos 3 x, all the rest would be the same, but you'd have to think of it as being shifted 3 squares out of 12 squares, or 3 twelfths, or pi over 4. So you could write that if you want. Usually people aren't writing negative cosine equations, unless it so happened that that meant that it was right on the axis and you didn't need a phase shift. Usually if you need a phase shift anyways, you're going to pick a maximum point and call it positive cosine. All right, so that's some cosine equations. If we're going to write sine equations, everything else is going to be the same. We're going to have a 6, we're going to have sine, we're going to have a 3 here. We're going to need a phase shift, have a minus 2 in the end. For a sine equation, we need a middle point on the way up. So we need a point that's at negative 2 here. So you could use that point, the first one to the right, or you could use this point, the first one to the left, which is actually the closest one. Either one of those is, is going to be fine. If we're going to use this point, it's 5 spaces out of 12. So it would actually mean that we would have to say x minus 5 twelfths of pi. Or if we were going to do this one, we'd have to say plus 3 twelfths of pi, which would actually be pi over 4 if we're going to put it in lowest terms, if we called it that. I'll just leave the one of them there, though, for now. And actually, the closest thing for sine would be if we were going to call it negative sine, as in if there was a vertical reflection, because if we're calling a negative sine, we're looking for a middle point on the way down, because that's as though this sine curve is flipped upside down. So if we're calling it negative sine, we could use this point, which is 1 12th of pi to the right. So then it would say minus pi over 12 to the right. So there are four different equations for that curve, for that function. They're not the only four, as we've seen. We could write other things there but there are four different things. All right, let's try another one here. Now for this graph here, the first thing maybe to notice is that the horizontal scale is rational numbers, as in not multiples of fractions of pi. So that makes a difference to what our equation is gonna look like. But nonetheless, we still have to work out those same things. So again, first of all, maybe the period is worth looking at. And I think it's easiest to start at the axis if you can see it and then look to the same point in the cycle, and then you can just read the scale down here that that says 16. So the period is 16. I'll write it up here instead, save myself some space. The period is 16, and so the b value is 2 pi divided by the period, or 2 pi over 16. You could reduce it to pi over 8 if you want, or you could leave it as 2 pi over 16. Either way is fine. So we've got one of our four parameters that we need in our equation. We are going to look for 
uh, the two vertical things, the amplitude and the vertical displacement. If we want the amplitude, the minimum is 2 and the maximum is 18. The amplitude is amplitude is going to be that max minus min divided by 2. Or in other words, 18 minus 2. Right? The difference between the two is 16. 16 over 2 is 8. So we know our amplitude is 8, as in there's 8 up and 8 down. And you can kind of see it from the graph that the middle of this thing is at 10. But again, if you, if you couldn't see it, that vertical shift or vertical displacement, you can do a very similar formula to this but it's not max minus min over 2, it's the average, so it's adding them and dividing by 2. It's max plus min divided by 2, so it's 18 plus 2 divided by 2, or in other words, 20 over 2, which is 10. All right, don't, don't mix up those two formulas. Try and understand them. Don't just try to memorize them. This one is finding the average, as in the middle is the average, and then the other one is finding half the difference, because that's what the amplitude is, half the difference between the high and the low. So we've got three of our four parameters. We can start writing in our equation. Maybe let's write sine, a sine equation here first, and we have 8 sine. Our b value is going to be 2 pi over 16, or pi over 8. Either one is fine. Uh, and then we need our plus 10 on the end. And if we're going to have a phase shift, probably the simplest thing is to say, here's our phase shift right here, because that's a sine curve starting in the middle on the way up. So that value you can just read off the scale as 4 here, so this is going to be x minus 4. You could also call it out to here if you really wanted to. You could, instead of minus, minus 4 here, you could say minus 20, and it's correct, but usually you probably want to choose the closest thing. You could pick this point, middle point on the way down, but you'd have to say minus 8 sine and so on, and then plus 4 to shift to the to shift that way. But as I said, if you're if you're going to do a phase shift anyways, usually you don't do a you don't write an equation with a negative at the front. So that's probably the best sine equation to write. For a cosine equation, cosine equation, we're looking not for middle points, we're looking for maximums or minimums. So if we were going to use this maximum point to write our equation here, we could write y equals 8 cos, where everything else is the same, the plus 10 on the end. The only difference is the phase shift. If you're using that, you're going to say that 8 to the right is the phase shift, so it's going to say x minus 8 there. And the only other thing I would suggest is probably neither of those two is the best equation to write. Probably the best equation to write is to use this point because it so happens that a minimum point is right on the axis. So if there's a minimum point right on the axis, you can use negative cosine. So we're going to say negative 8 cos 2 pi over 16. Again, everything else is the same. Plus 10 in the end. But we don't need a phase shift at all here, so we can just say x there like that. You don't need brackets or anything. Now sometimes people write it like that, 2 pi over 16 times x. Sometimes people write the equivalent 2 pi x over 16. Either way is fine. You should be able to kind of recognize both of them as being the same thing. And that's probably the best equation to write just because it's the simplest. One, it doesn't have a phase shift involved. If you were substituting in values for x to find y values, you wouldn't have to worry about putting brackets and doing all that kind of stuff. So there's three different equations. Again, they're not the only three, but they are three different equations for that curve. All right, so that is writing equations given the graph of a sine or a cosine, transform sine or cosine function.